on the docket. 965, 966. We've got Framber Valdez and the Astros at minus 172. Matt Manning and the Tigers at plus 152. Total of nine flat across the board at minus 110. Corby, let's start with you here. You got a play in this one. Astros got the brakes beat off them yesterday by 16. We talked about tied for the worst loss in team history. Seems like a decent bounce back spot here, but look, Matt Manning, his numbers stack up. I mean, it's not like this is some wild pitching advantage here for Houston. Matt Manning has been pretty solid this year. Yeah, I think Matt Manning, if you look at his numbers early this year uh, and even like to the recent success, he, he looks fine. Um, the issue is I don't think that he's a good pitcher. He is in the bottom 10 percentile in whiff, strikeout, chase rate. Uh, hard hit rate, like every single metric that you can find, he's in the bottom 10 percentile. His stuff doesn't move a ton. Uh, he throws 93 miles an hour, uh, 93 to 81, which is okay, but like he's not really fooling anybody at 509 expected slugging percentage. Uh, and I just, I'm, I'm not buying it. The main thing here is um, <laughs> if you want an Astros team pumped up and, and ready, they had their closed door meeting early this week, and then they lose by 16. They head to Detroit. I think it's a really good spot to back. Uh, this Astros lineup who has all the intangibles to score runs. I don't think we have a worry about that. And this Tigers offense who base runner, I believe has rated last in baseball. Um, not a very good offense overall. So can they get to Valdez? I don't think so. And in most cases, I think that uh, Houston can score at least a few runs on, on Matt Manning. So for that reason, I took the Astros first five run line minus 115, I believe for the sake of the show. Uh, I just think that Houston, after, off of a game where they just got absolutely torched, they had hit ten hits in that game. So I don't, I don't look at it too bad of, of a loss. Um, it, JP, JP France got absolutely murdered, but uh, other than that, their offense is still clicking. So um, by all means, give me Houston here. Yeah, it's uh, interesting here. Uh, weighted OPS base one is pretty close for me, six seventy seven to six ninety. Actually, the lineup for the Tigers in sixty five plate appearances against Valdez has a three sixty five average. I never. Get the damn Tigers right, so I'm not touching this with a 10-foot pull. But what does the model say here? Astros, Tigers. Priced at minus 176. So that's kind of right where the market's at. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys both said a couple interesting things. Uh, first of all, you said you can't get the Tigers right, so you're not going to play the Tigers. I, I think that that – I mean, it sounds like simple advice, but, you know, sometimes – you, you just don't have the, the correct feel. There's 30 teams, and if you got a, if you got a team that you, you can't figure out or that's kicking your ass, you know, maybe the best thing to do is just to stay away from that team. So that's – I mean, it sounds simple, but maybe that's a, that, that's a, that's a good idea. And then yeah. Corby mentioned the, the Tigers being my worst-rated offense, and, and they are versus right-handed pitching. Uh, they're a little bit better versus lefties, but not much. They're 26th in baseball. Like the Houston offense, there's nothing wrong with the Houston offense. They're 12th in baseball. I think what's concerning about this game and kind of why I don't have the Astros uh, favored uh, on my line more than they than than the the market is, is my numbers on Valdez are, are, are interesting from a split standpoint. First of all, from an overall standpoint, uh, there's a couple concerning things about Valdez. Uh, you look at his his hard hit per nine. League average is 10. Per nine hard hit balls, and he's at 12.9 hard hit balls per nine, which is in the lower quartile, 15th percentile. Uh, Man, he's not much better. He's at 11.8, which is a 30th percentile. But I, I've gone over this. I, I know Corby doesn't doesn't do this, is and then maybe this is why we have kind of a little bit of disparity on this game. But Valdez at home, you look at a strikeout percentage of 27 percent and a walk percentage of four percent. On the road, it's at 21 percent. A walk percentage of 7%. Ground ball rate, good both places, 59% at home, 52% uh, on the road. But you look at his last four starts on the road, and his ISO power numbers are bad, 0.308. Uh, he was good against Oakland with ISO power, 0.050. But last two starts versus Baltimore, Miami, 0.346 and 0.276. Uh, Houston may have a problem with uh, with with Valdez on a on the road. It's going to be interesting to see. I hope I hope Corby because I I took a, I took a look at that. I think I think uh, you know a motivated Houston team versus the Detroit team. Like what kind of motivation do they have? Uh, let's 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 get this game done and, and not get hurt motivation. Uh, but I just I I can't get over these splits that are that are very uh, stark for uh, for Valdez. So for that reason, I'm staying off the game. Yeah, uh, I have to stay away. Like I said, and you're not wrong. Uh, Tigers, I just I know they're a bad team, but when I bet against them, I think I cashed one time a Twins double result like a month ago. Other than that, the Tigers always come back to bite me, so I don't mess with them here. 
Valdez, you know, great stuff. Cy Young candidate, of course, through the no hitter. But you're right. Just sometimes it just looks off and he gets hit hard. For purposes of this show, we're locking in the Astros run line in the first five innings for Corby. And that's sitting at minus 115. Let's head. 